the government of India has announced measures to help companies raise funds, including allowing Indian companies to directly list in overseas markets. It is also expected that a mandatory requirement to have such securities listed on the Indian stock exchanges may be done away with. That, in my view, is, is a very different uh, change to the previous regime and to the previous regulations. Where we stand, as Raja also mentioned, uh, is when the Companies Act was amended and as part of the recent Atmanirbhar Bharat announcements, perhaps an upside of this terrible COVID tragedy, the government has shown some serious momentum behind allowing direct listing of Indian companies overseas once again. While many may perceive this as access to lower cost capital, what is most important in my mind is the trust it will generate in Indian corporates and leaders. The burden of evidence, the cost of compliance can be heavy and therefore this may not be the route for everyone to take. As corporate leaders, you must take a lot more responsibility for the actions of the company and its employees. Therefore, I believe you must invest heavily to ensure robust controls, compliance, and to keep yourself out of any potential penalty box. An opportunity to companies incorporated in India which are unlisted to have the ability, freedom and optionality to choose where to list based upon a number of factors like cost, valuation, branding, etc. Indian companies had to undergo a fairly significant cost restructuring in terms of their holding structure if they wanted to list overseas. So the direct listing enablement and this route will remove this frictional cost which will be, uh, I think, a very significant incentive. Uh, also, you know, for issuers, it makes a difference to be evaluated by uh, the analysts in certain markets, which have far more experience in these particular sectors. So the valuation of the company gets fleshed out and clearly the, the opportunity for investors to evaluate some of these new age companies is significantly greater than it is purely in the domestic market. One of the things that Frank touched on is a very key uh, differentiating factor for NASDAQ versus any other global exchange is the fact that we have a services business embedded in our uh, DNA. Uh, we began building this services business back in 2005 with an acquisition and then have organically built other services as well as acquiring ones at NASDAQ. And, they really focus on the investor relations suite because if you are a Indian company or a Chinese company or an Australian company or a, a Argentinian company like Mercado Libre, you know, when you come to the US, you have a brand new set of challenges and they, they go far beyond language challenges. You have to understand how to really understand who your shareholders are today, target the right shareholders for tomorrow, how you engage with them, how you have the right tools, for tracking them and we provide those services to the companies that list with us. What can an international listing do for an Indian company? I think it's it's all about putting some of those large Indian technology and other companies on an equal footing, on an equal cost of capital footing and in an equal sort of, you know, go after international clients, international markets footing. Um, because an international listing will uh, allow you to grow uh, your brand, your people, your, your business in a, in a more accelerated fashion internationally outside of India. We're looking at companies whose peers are based um, in the U.S. market, uh, where there is significant analyst coverage uh, for those companies and where there's just uh, essentially, investors have significant experience in investing in that type of company, meaning high growth technology, uh, a company that may not be generating any real revenue at, at, at the moment, um, technology, biotech, etc. U.S. investors, European investors, they have a great deal of experience uh, and they're very confident in their ability to value these companies.
and i remember that when uh, uh, we were helping indian companies list on the aim market and i think probably every indian company that's been listed on the market we've been involved in some capacity or the other but i think the high was uh, you know as keshav also mentioned that i was accompanying one of our clients and when we together put our hand on uh, the buzzer to um, ring the bell uh, for the opening of the exchange i think it was the adrenaline rush is incomparable uh, one of the key recommendations that we believe uh, would be important to see how it comes is uh, whether the indian uh, mca uh, will allow these private companies to continue to file uh, the financial reporting under ifrs with a reconciliation to indas and that would reduce a lot of burden on these companies which choose to go public overseas uh, through this regulation altogether for a foreign private issuer the only real uh, substantive requirement is to have an all independent audit committee um for everything else they can default the home country rules so if an indian list company is going under the direct listing rules you know whatever the indian companies act would require them um is applies to them they can just follow that and uh, other than the audit committee rules um now they can choose to uh follow a higher standard so for example majority independent board you know have a compensation committee which is independent nominating committee independent ceo chairman separation so it's really a wide canvas that they can choose from but the important part is that it gives them you know the option and the flexibility of going with the bare minimum of just the audit committee we really are very confident that we will see a significant number of indian companies uh i believe and we believe at run thornton you know technology and renewables will be some of the sectors there'll be early adopters of that group when that opens up uh, but at the same time they should not scare anyone not everyone can should or will list on overseas market there will still be a uh, uh, buoyant opportunity for people to continue to list uh, in india and indeed you know pursue dual listings 